So the big hype in the life coaching industry these days, it seems, or at least the topic of discussion that frequents my timeline, is the topic of insurance. Should a life coach get insurance? How can a life coach get insurance? What type of insurance should a life coach get? And so it goes from that question down a rabbit hole of theory and thought and opinions and advice and what used to coulda shoulda worked for my friends back in the day but no one is really speaking from personal experience until i came across a comment y'all that opened my world okay taught me some stuff and i said oh i have to tell my coaches hey ld So for those of you who are new to my tribe, welcome. If this is the first time you're hearing my fabulous voice, you are a part of a coaching community hosted by yours truly. My name is Andrika J. Austin. I go by Coach AJ for short. I am a master life coach trainer who came from dealing with divorce and the death of my mother on the same day, the downsizing of my corporate career, dropping out of college, dealing with homelessness, who decided to take my destiny into my own hands. And I dedicated the last seven years to the life coach industry from getting certified to now certifying over 120 coaches around the world. I've designed a coaching curriculum that certifies these coaches in one day online. And so I love that I can dedicate time like this back to you coaches in the community. Those of you who are aspiring to become life coaches, those of you who are rebuilding your brand, who is interested in this topic of why life coaches get sued. Did you guys know that life coaches could get sued? Hey, Coach Camille, my very first coach of the year, Coach 0111 is in the house, everybody. So Coach Camille went through the certification process with me this year. And if you want to know about my life coach certification training, start by taking the free life coach quiz at www.thelifecoachquiz.com. Again, it's thelifecoachquiz.com. It's free. It takes like 60 seconds to go put in your email address. Give me the top answer that sticks out to you that's on that quiz. Just click it, whatever speaks to your heart, and then I'll see your score. Camille says, yes, I did. It's worth it. Thank you, Camille. You know, I love you, girl. So Camille, girl, I got some tea. I could not wait to share this. But before I did a live, I added this to the new book that you guys see in the audio. It's called The Life Coach Revisited. In case you don't know, The Life Coach is kind of my brand, okay? And so in this book, I address everything. What is a life coach? What a life coach is not. The quiz is even in the book. I actually had a discussion with my coach on yesterday who um, I was sharing, you know, the quizzes in the book. And I love how I have it laid out there because we considered it doing some revisions. And I said, no, coach, I'm going to leave it like it is. I like it. People love it. Over 40 of you guys have taken this quiz in the last few days, which is amazing to me because you want to know if your next step should be becoming certified. So go see the lifecoachquiz.com. So, again, I was scrolling a, a Facebook group, minding my business. Um, and someone posted, you know, what type of insurance the life coach could get. And it led to a discussion. I said, I'm going to just play devil's advocate because, you know, your coach know her stuff, right? So it wasn't that I don't know about insurance, event insurance, business insurance, malpractice insurance. All of this applies to the life coaching industry, you guys. You know, I know. And I said, well, let me play devil's advocate and educate the people who don't know. Instead of coming in as a truth teller, You know, let me see what other people will say. And so because this question is so frequent about life coaching and insurance, I said, well, why would a coach get sued? And I posted that in the comments, y'all, being messy. But it was messy in a good way. If you hear me pause, I am sipping some miso soup. It's my favorite soup in the world. The cashier at Trader Joe's looked at me like I was crazy because I got six. They come in a box. So I got six boxes of them. And he went from looking at me crazy to giving me some recipes. So anyway, I'm sipping soup and I'm talking to you guys, drinking my miso, okay? And so after I posted the question about why would life coaches get sued, it just opened up this stream of comments and discussion. And they already know that I'm not uneducated. I mean, literally, Master Life Coach Trainer is in my Facebook profile title as we speak, right? So they like, okay, she playing, but let us play with her, okay? 
And so all these other coaches that are a part of this group came in and they flooded the comments answering my question about why life coaches could get sued. But one comment, y'all, blew me away. It stood out and it was so friendly. It was nice, even though I was being messy and uh, messy in a fun way, (laughs) fun, educational way. And she said, you know, AJ, I had a friend who did not have insurance that's now going through a lawsuit. She said, not just one friend, but friends. Hey, Cassandra. And I said, really, girl? You know, so now we're about to really get into some tea because, you know, we're trying to do this in the Facebook comments without being like obvious and putting the business out there. I should have screenshotted this conversation for you guys. By the way, y'all, I'm trying to bring back my lives. They will not be late night lives because I'd be tired now. My sleep schedule is all off. So I'm going to try to be here on Tuesdays at 12 with you guys to give you some educational tips about the life coaching industry and how you can use it to be the bomb in your business as you build a better business brand, optimize outreach opportunities and make more money. That stands for BOM bomb. But if you don't know, now, you know, you know, hey, Shantaria, how are you? So she started telling me. I'm asking questions. I'm like, girl, what happened? Why your friends get sued? What they do? Who's suing them? You know, I'm trying to get the tea to bring it back to y'all. She said, listen, and I knew that's what that was going to be her comment. She was like, I can't tell their business, but go to Google. I said, you know what? Google is my best friend. I've never thought to research life coaches getting sued. So me and Google, y'all know I have to whisper that because I got three phones that'll pop on anytime they hear the G word, but they're in my office. I'm sitting in my bedroom, so we're good. So the G word led me down another rabbit hole that enlightened me that there are literally live cases of life coaches being sued for various reasons. And at the crux of it all is that these are uncertified life coaches. That's the, that's like the, the, what do they say? The butt of the joke? Nope, not the butt of the joke. The point of the joke. Okay. And it's not a joke. The common denominator in all the cases that, that you're now lawyer, (laughs) master life coach trader. I'm now a lawyer after reading all these cases The most common denominator is that these people are not certified and it's leading them down this dark hole of um, overstepping some boundaries that interfere with like counseling and therapy and mental health, giving advice and just doing stuff that a life coach has not been trained to do. But they're not even trained as a life coach, you guys. And so that just hit my heart and it further hit closer to home because, you know, I believe in the education of the miseducated life coach. That's why I show up on lives here. That's why I have books like The Life Coach Revisited. That's why I host my one day life coach certification training. That's why I'm giving away the free quiz over at thelifecoachquiz.com so you can start your educational process because the Bible says for my ministers, elders, deacons, bishops, reverends, sisters, evangelists, prophetesses, Who else did I leave out, Camille? I know you go to church too. For all of us who are deep in the Lord, the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So this goes into what I've been preaching and teaching about over the last few days. When you just decide to pick up the title coach, throw it in front of your name and start telling people that you're a coach, you open yourself up for legalistics that are not so fun. And I knew it was possible. I just didn't know specific cases where it was happening yet, but I knew there was potential. And y'all, I got so excited because I was sitting and I was reading and I was learning. Is this something else y'all want to hear more about? Because I got the tea, honey. Let me know. I need to see some emojis. I need some engagement because if not, you know, we can wrap this up. I can go back to drinking my miso, miso soup or go back and warm it up. I got some packages from Amazon today. If you looked at my stories, I got some new um, marketing merchandise today. But uh, OK, Camille says she wants the tea. I see your love, girl. Thank you. Who else wants the tea, honey? Because I got it. Um, I'm not going to give y'all all the tea because either you got to do two things. Either you're going to go to Google it for yourself or you're going to get that book that you see up in that audio picture, The Life Coach Revisited, because I'm telling you how to become a skilled, trained, qualified, certified, professional life coach. Okay, 
in a day online y'all know we dealing with the rona right you can get certified online and pre start protecting yourself now you getting certified as a coach will not protect you from getting sued but i'm about to give you the tea for if you decide to keep calling yourself a coach and you ain't even at least started investing in knowing how to avoid getting sued okay camille says keep talking on <laughs> work i'm listening okay so let me keep giving coach camille the tea honey while y'all others listen in because y'all ain't saying nothing Say hey in it with the emoji or put an emoji in the comments or something. Now, if not, you're just on here being nosy to see what I was nosy about. <laughs> so let me start at the top. Number one, in the same group, somebody said, when people ask you, Camille, this was your question from class too. Somebody put recently, when people ask you what a life coach does, what do you say? And it just so happens that among all this other research with the law cases, hey, Anika Johnson, um, I came up with a new definition for what a coach does. You ready, Camille? I hope you're taking notes while you're listening at work to the T. So in a nutshell, coaches help their clients plan and produce on their personal and professional potential. I know that's a lot of P's, but that's the point, partner. Coaches help their clients plan and produce on their personal and professional potential. When you quote that, make sure you put Andrika J. Austin, cause that's mine, okay? So that's how you tell people what a coach does. We help our clients plan and produce on their personal and professional potential. That's what we do. But because coaching is so new, it's so disrespected, because we don't have specific training or license or educational backgrounds that are required by law, which is the reason it makes it easy for people to call themselves a coach. They have not been certified. They know how to talk to people. They start giving their opinions. They start giving their advice. They may even help you reach a goal or two, but they're not skilled in a system to help their clients get the absolute same results every time, regardless of what client it is. But anyway, back to the lecture at hand. So because we don't have any specific requirements behind us other than I advise you to just look into a life coach certification training, pick up a book on becoming a life coach, learn some skills and techniques that's gonna help you dodge some of these lawsuits that I'm about to tell y'all about, okay? And again, I ain't telling y'all all the business because you got to get the book. That's the point of me being here today. The Life Coach Revisited, if you want it, put it in the comments. Uh, send me the link, AJ, and I will because it is available. But today we're talking about the Life Coach Quiz over at thelifecoachquiz.com. Start there. Then you'll know if you're ready for the real tea. So we got the fact that, you know, the law does not tell us what to do as coaches. So we think we grown, right? And so you have companies that train coaches like me. I have a coach training company and we are self-regulated. -regu that means we um, stand by our own code of ethics. We are professional. We are skilled. Most of us have been certified. So hint, hint, if you're getting certification, make sure your own <laughs> certifier is certified. Y'all, there's some stuff going on in the coaching industry. Listen, I could tell you more stories. But anyway, that's not why we're here today. So because we're self-regulated, um, I'm going to speak for myself and my coaching company. Being self-regulated adds more credibility, more reliability to the work that we do and to the work of our coaches that we train. So, for example, Coach Camille is here. She's at work. She's listening. She wants the rest of the tea. She's like, come on, Coach AJ, tell us the juice, girl. But Coach Camille said, yes, top of this year, February 1st, 2020, she got trained and certified with me in a day online from the comfort of her home. And now she's among our community of coaches who gave themselves permission to take the day to learn, study the skills. She said, Coach AJ, you are a walking training manual. I'm at the point in the life coaching industry where I have studied. Did y'all see my post today on my Facebook page? Yesterday was my seven year anniversary as a certified life coach. 28,105 days of being a certified life coach. Now, I don't take this lightly. So that means from the day I walked into my certification training, I left with books, DVDs, CDs, podcasts, YouTube channels, radio shows, TV shows, people to follow. Like, 
I ain't playing, okay? So my experience, my expertise, my stories, what I've been through, what I've learned, working with clients, hosting events, showing up on lives like this and engaging in a dialogue with women like you who want to become certified or either grow as a coach is what further establishes my credibility with my training company and why being self-regulated and educating myself as well as my coaches helps my training company to stand out in the industry. And so I said all of that because the law considers this, you know, they're like, we can't tell y'all what to do yet. You're self-regulated for now. But one of the main reasons, especially uncertified coaches are sued, is because there are now claims of what's known as tort, T-O-R-T. And tort is anything from negligence, where you're neglecting to do for your clients what you promised you would do for your clients and they paid you to do for them, fraud, that usually looks like taking other people's programs or something on their website or their contracts or their disclaimers and literally copying and pasting it. And I know fraud exists because it has and continues to happen to my coaching company. People have been on my website, they have purchased my courses. They have attended my classes and smiled on camera with me and went out and said, okay, now I do what AJ does as well. Let me certify you. I was even in dialogue on Facebook recently. Another coach tagged me because I trained and certified her. She's among that 120 coaches that have been trained and certified with me over the last four years of me being a master life coach trainer here in Atlanta. And she was re recommending her friend to go through my training as well. And a coach who I know for sure is a part of that, what we just talked about, F word, <laughs> uh, got mad at the conversation because she started the discussion about, let me certify you too. And my friend said, no, AJ certified me. I want her to certify my friend. And so that coach messily just deleted the comment because nobody was paying her attention that she wanted to certify them. You guys got to pay attention to what's going on in the coaching industry because negligence, fraud, misrepresentation, saying that you're a coach, but you haven't invested in yourself as a coach, getting trained, reading books, coaching. I cannot tell you how many requests I have had from people who say, AJ, I want to be like you. I want to be where you are. How can I train and certify coaches? And I said, well, how many people have you coached? It's crickets. The answer is usually zero or less than zero. Can we can we get less than zero? That means that people are calling themselves coaches, but not actually coaching. And now they want to certify coaches. That's called misrepresentation, fraud, negligence. All of that ties into it, along with other things like um, what the law calls intentional infliction of emotional stress or distress. Now, this was actually the description of one of the lawsuits, among other charges that I read about that coaches are being sued for, those uncertified and certified, I have to say. But again, intentional infliction of emotional stress and duress. That means if you say you're a coach and you take someone's money and you're not certified and you're already stealing someone else's information and trying to do what they do, you're already committing fraud, misrepresentation, and now you're about to commit negligence, which leads to intentionally inflicting emotional stress or distress on your coaching client. What that looks like is you leading them on. You say, I can help you, I can help you, but they're not seeing any results, and you know you can't help them. One lady's lawsuit that comes to mind, she was going through a divorce. This is the T, Camille. She was going through a divorce, for some reason, she hired a life coach. That threw me off, but she hired a life coach, I guess to just get her life on track, I don't know, but she was still going through this divorce. Hey, Pamela Reese, as she was going through the divorce, um, she was not paying her life coach. Their agreement was that her life coach could help her write her book later about her life and the divorce and actually working with a coach. So the life coach would own like royalties of her book. Come to find out the lady going through the divorce 
basically didn't like the work of the life coach. You know, divorce brings out some ugliness from you guys. Y'all heard that in the top of my story, the top of this live. I've been through divorce. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I did it butt naked on the floor in a homeless shelter by myself, filling out divorce papers, crying my eyes out, mad, hurt, but knowing that it had to be done. So I can only imagine what else came out of this partnership with a life coach who now was supposed to own the rights to helping this lady go through a divorce, tell her story. The lady flipped on the life coach and said, nope, you are a fraud. You have neglected to do what you told me to do. You have misrepresented yourself. And now I'm under emotional distress and you intentionally did it. So now you've done what's called a breach of contract. So she turns around and she sues the life coach. That's drama, girl. That's one story out of many that's available on Google. I'm not talking about them in my book, The Life Coach, but I am addressing the reasons that coaches can get sued. And this is a topic that needs to be discussed because we are now seeing it live in action in living color. So we talked about the fact that Having a license, having a specific training, having a specific educational background is not required by law in the life coaching industry. But in order for you to know how to help your clients plan and produce on their personal and professional potential, because, you know, that's Coach AJ's definition of what a life coach does. You need to find a training company who is self-regulated. You need to give yourself that credibility of going through a credible coach training company who's reliable in their work, who has success and revenue and recommendations to show for it because they've trained other certified coaches. Your coach is certified. And then it's starting to help you know how to avoid. Because see, if you're trained and certified, you're skilled and qualified, you invested the time, the money, the resources, the energy um, to become a coach, you know how to sidestep all of this negligence, fraud, misrepresentation, in, inflicting pain, breach of contract. Because if you in the right coach training program, you know how to set up a contract and what's included in that. That's something that I now address in my life coach certification trainings, how to set up your coaching contract, the things that need to be in your terms and, to, and conditions. It's more than just about the money. It's the emotional support. It's representing yourself in high standards, ethics, professionalism, telling the truth, showing up, being who you are and keeping your end of the bargain. So I feel like just for what I've shared with you guys today so far, that's enough. Like, if you're not certified, get certified. That's the thesis <laughs> of today's live. There's so much more that I could talk about. I probably will because it gets even deeper, even better. And I'm addressing all of this in the Life Coach Revisited book. If you want your copy, especially replay viewers. Hey, replay viewers, put it in the comments. Let me know you want your copy. Now let's chat. I know y'all been listening for a minute. Y'all been popping on and off. Y'all just like, okay, how does this apply to me, girl? If you ain't certified, it starts there. So make sure you check out the lifecoachquiz.com. Take the quiz. See if becoming certified is for you. If not, stop calling yourself a coach so you can avoid some of these things that people are just willy-nilly suing, quote unquote, coaches about, okay? Are there any questions about what we've talked about so far? Put them in the comments, y'all. Let's chat. Give me a minute to breathe and catch my breath and sip some miso. <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions? Okay, so y'all know my Facebook lives are like mini trainings, but I ain't gonna get on here and lose my voice for y'all today talking. <laughs> you gotta pay me to do that. But I did wanna come and address this new hot topic, and it's really not new. I'm just late to the game hearing about this, but it's so exciting. I don't know why, but as I found myself Scrolling and reading and gathering this knowledge and information for you guys to include in the new book, The Life Coach, Revisited. I just felt like this was the reality TV of the life coaching industry. Like, what? So I'm sitting here getting excited and I um, posted in the group um, to let the coach who gave me the idea to go to Google. No, I said, I am so shocked at what I have discovered since you told me to go do my research. 
And she said, yes, that's only the half of it. So I'm scared to know what else is going on. Um, another story that pops out is, uh, and this is, this comes up in the, in our trainings. Um, when, when I've had men take the training before we have men and women who decide to be like relationship coaches. They might be, um, marriage coaches. They may be a divorce coach, but either way, sometimes, and I have to tell our coaches, you have to be careful. That's why you need to know how to coach by getting certified. Because sometimes when you're not on the right track, operating in integrity, feelings, emotional sex gets involved um, or the misrepresentation, like, you know, one may feel led on. So in one lawsuit I read about, A life coach who was a man was being sued because his client, his life coaching client, who was a woman, hired him to get over a relationship. He was a relationship coach, life coach turned relationship coach. And she did well. She started to blossom and thrive and he was helping her out. And all of a sudden, whatever happened in between time, they started to date and sleep together. And then... Eventually, the man, the life coach, the relationship, quote unquote, expert or guru cut it off. He ended the relationship. The life coaching client sued, saying, you know what? He, from the beginning, was building me up to get up the courage to ask him out, to date him, to use me, to sleep with me, and then to dump me. I want to sue him because that is unprofessional. Y'all. I don't even know what to say. I was just grossed out at that point. I was like, oh, M, G. It's so many other stories, but those are two that came to mind that I've shared with y'all since I've been live. Y'all ain't asking me no questions, so I guess, you know, y'all may be sitting there with your mouth open as well. But this is a hot topic, and I'm addressing it in the Life Coach Revisited book. If you want a copy, say, send me the link, AJ, in the comments, and I'll definitely make sure you get the um, website for the book. But in the meantime, my free gift to you today during today's live is to take the Life Coach Quiz. Again, it's free over at thelifecoachquiz.com. It is three statements. You select the one that is true for you that speaks to your heart. And then you'll know if even becoming a certified life coach or continuing quote unquote coaching is the right thing for you or your next steps. Shout out to whoever just took the quiz. I got the pop-up. I can't see your name, but it shows that your form came through. Thank you, girl. I appreciate you. What questions can I happily answer or address? What did you guys take away from today? I want to hear something. Say something, Camille. So let me know what you learned. Because while this is a scary topic, like I said, y'all, I have enjoyed researching this topic. It was fun for me to learn how this applies to the life coaching industry, but more importantly, how to sidestep all of this. If you have your contract in place because you've studied and learned how to put together a coaching contract, you don't have to worry about breach of contract. You just look at what you wrote and your client signed and you agreed to and you stay on track. But you gotta know how to set that up. And that that is definitely covered in my life coach certification training. Um... Emotional support, making sure that you're not, and we we definitely talk about this in our training. Um, A lot of people get certified to stay in integrity, to make sure that they're not inflicting pain on their clients because they have had that done to them. So if y'all heard my live I did called Coach Hurt, that's what we were talking about. Um, I've heard like church hurt, you know, where you get saved and you think your life is going to be all peaches and cream and then you realize, wait a minute, I'm dealing with people. And uh, Jesus, you're going to have to help me. It often leads to church hurt. Um, Same thing with coaching. You're dealing with people, hurt people who have not addressed their own issues, who have not invested in themselves to become certified. And so they're inflicting this emotional distress onto their clients and calling it coaching. And that's not what it is. And ultimately, they're misrepresenting the coaching industry themselves. They're committing fraud by stealing other people's information and presenting it as their own. And they're neglecting the role, the duties, the job assignments of a coach. That's why they get sued. That's just the first few reasons. I have a whole page and a half more of notes I could share, but again, 
I'm not on here to preach or teach. <laughs> I'm here to spill the tea today. Just gossip and be messy. And then we arise with the educational component that's going to help us all be better coaches and help our clients live better lives, right? Did you guys enjoy this topic? Let me know. Let me see some hearts, some likes, some emojis. Say something in the comments. I want to give at least one person a chance to ask any question or add to the discussion if you want to talk more. I'm happy to chat more. If not, I'm about to wrap it up. Um, in the Life Coach book, again, I do address this topic and we talk about, um, of course, the difference between how to stay in your lane as a coach and how to uh, not play counselor or deal with things like mental health issues um, or provide services you don't have no business providing as a coach. But that takes time. It gets deeper. And so, you know, again, that's in the book. Um, along with some scenarios of would you coach this client if. And so if you've been certified, you know which ones to respond to. You know which one is like, okay, this is a trick question, AJ, quit playing. But it's deep. Coaching is deep and it does border on some of the same characteristics of um, counseling and therapy, but that it is not. We're considered a part of the self-enrichment education teachers category. Like we're helping you help yourself. We ain't trying to like tell you what to do with your life. But life coaching is a 2.4 billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N, dollar industry. And um, it's estimated, hey, B Speaks Life, how are you? It is estimated that there are 53,000 professional coaches that are practicing worldwide. So for me to only tell y'all about two of the lawsuits that I know about, come on, you know, it's more, right? So I'm addressing all of that in the Life Coach Revisited. So make sure you say, AJ, send me the link in the comments if you want a copy of that book. It'll be released the top of next month. I'm so excited, which is like next week. Okay. Camille says, that's scary. I'm seriously considered doing LLC after I'm done with my book. Absolutely. So that's one of the first things I did because of my background in life coach certification training, Camille, um, which I'm getting a lot of requests for people who want to add a certification component to what they do. They don't necessarily want to train life coaches, but they want to certify people in their area. So like I just had a conversation with a personal development coach who wants to certify other personal development coaches. And then my coach yesterday was like, AJ, have you ever considered training other trainers to add a training component to what they do? So I'm like, Eric, you are in the spirit, sir. So we definitely are bringing that component to it. But one of the first steps is setting it up professionally. You know, whether you do a corporation, a LLC, a partnership, um, or some state as sole proprietors. I know a trainer here in Atlanta named Terry. That was her advice when I first started business 15 years ago. She said, you know, wait until you hit like $50,000. Um, in revenue to give people something to go after before you worry about having to protect it. But I say it's only at like $150. Go for it now. It's better to be safe than sorry. And usually what the corporate shields does is shield your personal assets. Like if you're a homeowner, if you got a couple cars, you know, that's paid off or anything that's um, worth value that someone could come after you for, including your business, then yeah, you want to protect it. Um, LLC, INC, you know, and get it right with God. Okay. So I did LLC, the limit limited liability, um, corporation. It was less complex than the INC. I've been an INC before and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and for tax purposes, you know, you want to know how to file and be able to um, claim your expenses with your coaching company, especially during times like this where things are shifting, money is shifting around. It went from offline to online and some of your major contracts or coaching um, opportunities like speaking or hosting events may have had to be postponed because of COVID-19. So you're now online. It's a whole different responsibility. You have technology, you have um, privacy, consent, confidentiality, because people are broadcasting live from their homes. So you do want to be protected knowing that you have established your company legally and it's legit. And if anyone tries anything funny, you know, you start at the top with that legal shield, that legal um, umbrella, that protection. Hi, Zachary. How are you? 
So yeah, Camille, thank you for adding that to the discussion um, because it does make you feel safer. It does, you know, make you feel like, okay, my company's good and now I can move forward. And it also puts you in a position of power um, because while I mentioned fraud and things like that are happening in the life coaching industry, you can also hire legal services to prove like my company is an LLC. I've been using this coaching model. This is my brand. I've shown on, showed up online um, serving my clients like this since this date. Now this person came and said they do it too or they stole my name. They stole my, mo not my model, but like my, they literally stole my worksheet or they stole something that I put in my book and they claimed it as their own. You can send them a cease and desist letter and have kind of like the upper hand legally because your company is protected. You got the paperwork to prove it. And you're not just fly by night. You didn't just show up and decide to be like, oh yeah, I coach too. I do what she does. And you stealing her stuff secretly. So hopefully something that I've shared up to this point um, has helped you with your coaching company. For those of you who listen to this in the future, make sure again, you're going to Google A University. You also have the updates on what's going on in the life coaching industry. I like this topic because no one is talking about why life coaches get sued. I ain't seen it yet. And I do study every day. I told my coach that I enjoy going into these Facebook groups and hearing what people are saying about the life coaching industry. And it's usually just regurgitating what they're hearing. But when you go and do your own research and get the facts, get the receipts, y'all, it's a whole nother world out there. And so that's what I love about me. I'm a knowledge nerd. I want to know, give me the education. I want to know what the law says. And that has helped protect me in so many ways by just knowing my stuff. So that's how I stand out as a coach. That's how I stand out as a master life coach trainer. If you want more information about my upcoming one day life coach certification trainings online, make sure you take the life coach quiz first. That's like step one. It's over at thelifecoachquiz.com. I don't see any more questions. I do appreciate you guys for tuning in, chiming in, listening in, getting the tea, gossiping with me today about what's going on in the life coach industry and how it applies to you, especially if you are not certified and you just calling yourself a coach. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to go sip my miso tea. I want you to remember until we meet again, my friends, there is someone somewhere waiting on you to go get certified as a life coach. Walk in your destiny so they can walk into theirs because it's when you let your light shine, you give others permission to do the same. When you impact one life, you impact generations. Remember that. I'm Master Life Coach Trainer Andrika J. Austin. I'll meet you over at thelifecoachquiz.com where you're going to take 60 seconds out of your day to enter your email address, select one of the three options that speak best to you in the quiz. And we'll talk again soon. Turn your notifications on. I'll see y'all next week. Same time. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. God bless. Bye, friends.